In order to understand how they hide in plain sight, we're going to need to understand something called anchoring bias or also sometimes called anchoring effect. According to Wikipedia, anchoring or focalism is a cognitive bias where an individual depends too heavily on an initial piece of information offered to make subsequent judgments during decision making. Once the value of this anchor is set, all future negotiations, arguments, estimates, etc. are discussed in relation to the anchor. It basically means we humans overvalue the first opinion we hear on a particular subject. We've all experienced this whether you realize it or not. Let's say you're going to a party to meet some new people. And when you're at the punch bowl, someone leans over and says that person XYZ is a really bad person and they do really bad things, something like that. That opinion is going to impact how you view and treat person XYZ. You have no reason to doubt what you heard first. And we humans tend to overvalue that first opinion, which could easily manifest itself in the way you treat person XYZ. You might dismiss, discount, and even dislike this person before you've ever even spoken to them. I'm sure we've all experienced this and we've probably also had the experience where sometime down the road after you get to know person XYZ you realize that they're a pretty nice guy or a good guy or a good person or something along those lines and very often with that you come to the realization that the person at the punch bowl who was whispering in your ear to begin with is the one you should have discounted dismissed and disliked I suspect that's why God goes out of his way to say that he doesn't just dislike but he considers people who do that an abomination. He literally said in many places that he hates that activity. He doesn't use words like rumors and gossip. In the Bible, it's called sowing discord. So if you're someone that practices rumors and gossip, you might want to do a discount double check on that one. Anyway, back to anchoring bias. I think Mark Twain frankly said it best. It is easier to fool someone than to convince them they've been fooled. So how does this work on a national or even worldwide scale? In the example we're going to show, we're going to bring up the name of an organization. An organization that you probably already have an impression about. In other words, you have a bias. You have an anchoring bias towards this organization, most likely. So in order to understand this, you're going to need to clear your mind and set aside your bias. The organization we're going to use in our example today is called the Trilateral Commission. Trilateral Commission was founded in 1973 by David Rockefeller, Zbigniew Brzezinski, and a few other hyper-powerful people like that. In fact, one of our quotes is from Zbigniew Brzezinski, and it goes like this. Speaking of a future at most only decades away, an experimenter in intelligence control asserted, quote, I foresee a time when we shall have the means and therefore, inevitably, the temptation to manipulate the behavior and intellectual functioning of all the people through environmental and biochemical manipulation of the brain. Anyone whose eyes are even half open sees this happening all across the world right now. By the late 1970s, a lot of people that mix inside the circles of power were trying to warn us about the Trilateral Commission and what their plans were for a one world government, a new world order. I suspect the very one world government discussed biblically in the book of Revelation and several other prophetic books about Satan's attempt to get the entire world to praise him. One of those quotes came from a man named Barry Goldwater. If you're my age, I'm sure you're familiar with the name. He was a U.S. Air Force general and then became a U.S. Senator for four terms from Arizona. He even ran for president in 1964. And at one time, he even chaired the Senate Intelligence Committee. This is not a conspiracy theorist. Side note, conspiracy theorists is another anchoring bias many people still have, which causes them to dismiss anything said by someone labeled as a conspiracy theorist. Starting to see how this works? Anyhow, he had this to say in 1979. The Trilateral Commission is intended to be the vehicle for multinational consolidation of commercial and banking interests by seizing control of the political government of the United States. The Trilateral Commission presents a skillful, coordinated effort to seize control and consolidate the four centers of power, political, monetary, intellectual, and ecclesiastical. In other words, religion. Now let's go to an excerpt from the 401 show where we break this down. And if you remember a show called Barney Miller, you're going to especially appreciate this. Because when people like Barry Goldwater and several others began warning of the Trilateral Commission, the powers that be pulled the old anchoring bias card. 
Let's watch. Now, we've all here heard of the Trilateral Commission, yes? Mm -hmm. Has anyone not heard of the Trilateral Commission? I haven't. Okay. Trilateral Commission is one of, the, one of these nebulous groups through which this group that I call the Illuminati, yeah. that we've now tracked back to the days of Jesus when he called them the synagogue of Satan. Right. These are like the Rothschild, Rockefeller families. They worship Lucifer privately. And I think we've shown some evidence of that on their jewelry. Yes. We have oh, a lot. Yeah. We have a lot oh, more. Oh yeah, no, I'm. But outwardly well to the world, they're known as that. Jews. But and Jesus even said these people are they're going to be the rulers of the world in the last days. They're they gather at secret places to hatch secret plans. Right. So he predicted that in conspiracy circles, Trilateral Commission is a famous group of people that meet. To essentially, they do what the Bilderberg Group does, what the CFR does, what they do at Bohemian Grove, where the rulers of the world get together, as was written in the Bible, uh, to basically... Where's Bohemian Grove? That's in California. Northern California off San Francisco. Okay. That's where you'll find anyone in power. Now, let's go back in history 40 years to 1981. <laughs> this is how they introduce the Trilateral Commission into our vernacular and how they shape our thoughts about it. Vernacular now, spectacular. <laughs> we all are familiar with Barney Miller, yes? yes. Anyone too uh, young for that? Oh, no. I don't know who Barney Miller is. Oh, I do. <laughs> uh, it was, the cheers, that, it was the cheers of the 1970s. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. And, okay, you guys ready? Yeah, I, Let's hit it. Barney, Mi Barney Miller Police Squad Funny Comedy Show. Mm -hmm. Here's how they do it. The ones you should be arresting, not me. Why didn't you say that before? What we got here? Yeah, Mrs. William Klein. He was wrecking an office. But I, I just wanted to meet them face to face. I, I wanted them to admit what they were doing. Who is they? He was in the office of the Trilateral Commission. Trilateral Commission? Yeah, the Trilateral Commission. <laughs> All right, what is the Trilateral Commission? <laughs> it's an organization founded in 1973 by David Rockefeller to bring together business and political leaders from the United States, Europe, Japan, so they could work together for uh, better economic and political cooperation between their nations. And with that, that's what they'd like us to believe. But you see, what they're really up to is a scheme to plant their own loyal members in positions of power in this country, to work to erase national boundaries and create an international community, and in time, bring about a one-world government with David Rockefeller calling the shots. <laughs> he goes on to that, and they basically Please. chalk him up as insane. But the beauty is... Which writer died after this? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this was introduced on purpose. Yeah. Remember, they, they don't try to hide, keep information out of the public mainstream. Who runs I mean, Hollywood? They, Who runs all that stuff? Thank you. Exactly. You guys notice anything on this You've just seen one example of how they hide in plain oh, sight serpent. using just one technique, the anchoring effect. How many heads does that serpent have? There are literally millions of examples. If you go back far enough, and there are dozens of techniques like anchoring bias which affect how we see the world. These mechanisms were in play all our lives, and our parents' lives, and even our grandparents' lives, although technological advancements have made them way more powerful in the last several decades. The point is, we were born into a system built to, well, brainwash the whole world. Brainwashing is a form of deception. I too was brainwashed until about 10 years ago. Out of this is a serious, like, that is going to have, what is it, a 10 head, 7 horn beast? Now, a beast is just a, it's a system, it's a government. This system. is really their seal or whatever. Yeah, the lightning bolt. Try that old Like, no, seriously? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It yes. is. They're blatant. It's cartel signaling. Like, seriously, <laughs> because this is just downright. Right now, we're watching KJ bravely go through publicly, no less. The very same process we all have to go through in order to open our eyes. I think that's why the great philosophers say things along the lines of, the truth will make you miserable at first, but it will set you free. It took the full destruction of my programmed worldview in order for me to understand exactly how true that statement is. So if you're like I was 10 years ago, don't fool yourself. If you've dismissed all the topics under that umbrella of that beloved term, conspiracy theory, it's not based on your intellect or reasoning skills. 
It's based on brainwashing and ignorance. It just means you've ignored looking for yourself because we subconsciously formed our opinions by watching thousands of hours of television and watching hundreds of shows like Barney Miller. None of this is intended to sound arrogant. Heck, I ignored things like this until I was 42, yet I thought I knew it all. And when you really think about it, that's the opposite of being enlightened or intellectual. And I also want to clarify that I didn't figure these things out because I'm some genius. I figured them out through a combination of divine providence and answering the knock at the door. Because someone is knocking. The fact that you're even listening to this is proof of that. In other words, I learned these things because of a miracle. And there's only one person who dispenses miracles. I totally understand how you feel because I didn't realize it either. But wouldn't you rather know the truth? The truth can still be found, but you won't find it in the sand. Don't be afraid like I was when I first discovered these things. There is a huge light at the end of all rabbit holes. So let's finish with a small clip from episode six, which might help you see the light at the end of that tunnel. And Meigs, I want you right now to read Revelation 2.9 because this addresses what this young man just said and something KJ said last week. Will you, will you read us 2.9? Do you mean 3.9? Maybe it's 3.9. Time. Yeah, it says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So in one of the passages, because you asked last week, because I, I was the same way, I wanted to get them. And Revelation 2.9 put me at ease, because you know what? I now trust even things I do not understand. I now trust it. So the thing you said last week about, I want to get them, I want... We don't have to. In fact, at the end of the day, if you are on Jesus' side of this equation, these mofos that are causing all these problems, and they're going to end up kneeling down at our feet. And we will have the last laugh.